Hi students, I am Nimisha and I will be teaching you your next chapter in science, Acid, Bases and Salts. This belongs to chemistry. Okay. So now, there are lot of substances around us, lot of food items and different things over there. When you taste, some things taste sour and some things taste bitter. We have already learnt in our previous classes that things that taste sour are usually acidic and things that taste bitter are usually basic. There are even are other substances. Now when you use Harpic to you wash the washrooms, what is it? Is it acidic or is it basic? Suppose I have acidity in my stomach, I am feeling very uneasy. What is it? It is acidic or basic? Is an acid juice being produced in your stomach or is it a basic? juice being produced in your stomach and let us say ok so now we know we call it acidity you have acidity you drink this so when you have acidity what will you drink will you drink lime juice is that a good remedy or is baking soda something related to a base a good remedy all such questions will be answered in this particular chapter so we have they are broadly classified substances are broadly classified into acids and bases when you combine them you get salts, we will come to salts a little later. So acids and bases, things that taste sour in nature, acids taste sour in nature, bases taste bitter in nature. Now if I have a uh, substance, if I give you a substance and I tell you, test and tell me whether it is an acid or a base, how do we do that? We have something called as indicators, what do indicators do? Indicators are chemical substances or extracts that when you add it to your substance, it will show either color change or smell change, odor, that is odor change. So such thing are, such substances are called indicators. So we broadly have two types of, classified into two types of indicators, natural indicators and synthetic indicators. These are all natural indicators. Litmus is a natural indicator. Turmeric. Turmeric is what uh, haldi, you all call haldi, yes that is a natural indicator. You can observe suppose something dal or sambar when it falls on your shirt, when you put soap on it, the color of the stain will change. Why does that happen? Because turmeric is a natural indicator, it is yellow in color initially. When you put soap on it, soap is a base, when you put soap on it, you are making the color of the turmeric. The turmeric is an indicator, it will show color change, so it changes. We have red cabbage extract which also behaves as a natural in indicator. Two synthetic indicators we will be studying, there are many, we will be studying two, methyl orange and phenolphthalene. Now the next question is here, what color does it change to? Methyl orange becomes what color? What is the change? We will understand that in the next section. Before that, acids. So now we study litmus. You must have heard litmus so many times in your lower classes. Litmus paper, litmus solution. Acids turn blue litmus red. Acids turn blue litmus red. Bases turn red litmus blue. If I put a base on a blue litmus, I will see no color change. If you want to see color change, you have to put the base on a red litmus and the red litmus will become blue. So now let us um, take note of the color changes observed by the different indicators. We will be studying four indicators in detail, red litmus, blue litmus, methyl orange and phenolphthalein. If I take red litmus paper or solution and if I add an acid to it, will the red litmus color change? and if it changes to which color does it change that is basically the experiment. So now here we will observe that there is no color change here so it remains no color change, no color change. If I take blue litmus and I add an acid to it you will observe that the blue litmus solution or the blue litmus paper turns red. So it turns red. Now if I take methyl orange Methyl orange solution, you take an acid and add 2-3 drops of methyl orange indicator to it, you will observe that the solution, the methyl orange, it was orange obviously before, now the solution, when the methyl orange enters the acidic solution, it turns pink. And phenolphthalein, if you add phenolphthalein indicator 
to the solution it remains colorless there is no change no nothing you do not observe anything so the solution remains colorless basis if you add base to a red litmus it basically turns blue if you add base to a blue litmus it is already blue no color change if you add methyl orange to a basic solution which color does it turn into it turns into yellow and if you add phenolphthalene to a basic solution you will observe that the solution turns pink you need to know all of this by heart and now which will using this table you can answer the questions related to activity 2.1 in your textbook they have given a list of acids and bases uh, you and they are telling you to observe what is the color change you see when you add these indicators to such substances I will be taking two such examples to solve I will be taking HCl and NaOH if you add HCl to red litmus solution HCl is an acid so if I add HCl to a red litmus solution do you observe any color change no color change if I add HCl to a blue litmus solution what happens then or if I add it to blue litmus paper the paper will turn red next if I add HCl to methyl orange HCl is acidic so it will become the solution becomes pink in color and if I, if I add phenolphthalein to HCl there is no color or you can say it is colorless coming to bases similarly NaOH is a base over here so if I add red if I put NaOH on red litmus paper the paper turns blue if I put NaOH on blue litmus paper there is no color change if I put NaOH if I put methyl orange take a few drops of methyl orange and add it to a container containing NaOH you will observe the solution turns yellow and if you take NaOH and add a few drops of phenolphthalein in that solution you will see that the solution turns pink so if you know this table you can answer all of this questions related to activity 2.1 using the knowledge that we have until now about indicators let us see if we can solve this question page 18 it is an in text NCRT in text question you have been provided with three test tubes so I have three test tubes one of them contains distilled water and the other two contain acidic and basic solutions respectively so one of them have distilled water one has acid one has base we don't know which we just know there is a solution here one is acid one is base one is distilled water if you are given only red litmus paper how will you identify the contents of each test tube they have given only red litmus paper how will you identify the contents now regarding litmus let us just recap acids turn acids turn blue litmus red bases turn bases turn red litmus blue so acids bases there are few substances that are neutral that is neither acid nor base such things are only called salts we will understand that a little later for now just understand neutral substances show no color change so distilled water is a very very good example for a neutral substance so our water over here the distilled water will show no color change agreed this is the knowledge we have using this let us see what we can do now I have taken the red litmus paper and I have added solution 1 to it this is 1 2 and 3 I have added solution 1 to it I have added solution 2 to it and I have added solution 3 so I will try this experiment with all the 3 which color is the paper it is red color paper so red litmus turns blue when when it is a base so now I added this solution no color change I added this solution no color change but as soon as I added solution 3 I observed that my red litmus became blue my red litmus became blue so can I therefore now say that this is my base why I have red litmus acid does not turn red litmus no color change in red of acid distilled water we do not know which is acid which is distilled water so they do not show any color change on red, lit red litmus paper the base turns red litmus blue when I tried solution 3 that red litmus became blue so therefore I can say this test tube contains base what happened in this experiment 
red litmus now has turned blue. So now which paper do I have? Do I have red litmus? No, now I have blue litmus paper. So this is done. Now we continue the experiment but now I have blue litmus paper. I add the solution 1 to this and I observe there is no color change. I add solution 2 to this and I observe my blue litmus is now becoming red. If blue litmus is turning red, the solution is acidic. So I can say this is acidic. The remaining solution whoever is left is nothing but the neutral solution or here who is the neutral solution? Distilled water. I hope it is clear. So we started off with red litmus solution, put drops of everything. Whichever solution turned the red litmus paper r r uh, blue, that solution was base. Now I have blue litmus paper in my hand and I have two solutions left. I took those two solutions and I added it to the blue litmus paper. One will show no color change because it is neutral and the acidic substance turned the blue litmus red. So I found out whichever is the acidic and the remaining solution is the distilled water. The next type of indicator we are studying here, very short brief to understand, olfactory indicators. Olfactory indicators are those indicators whose smell, so odor, you say sm smell and odor same thing, so whose odor changes when you add it to an acidic or basic media. If I take such indicators and add it to an acidic or basic media, the odor changes. Best example you all must have observed was onion. When you use onion in your house to cook, as you add it to different items, when you cut onion, you, you get one smell. You add it to, uh, di when you add different masalas, put the dal, add turmeric or uh, different things, you see the odor change, right? So onion is an olfactory indicator. Then vanilla is also an oil factory indicator. One more very good example is clove oil. You know cloves? Yes. So clove oil is also a very good olfactory indicator. Activity 2.2 is related to olfactory indicators. They tell you to take onion in a bag, heat it, take out the juice and to that you make it react with an acid or a base. What do you observe? You will observe that vanilla and onion both are acidic in nature. Because vanilla and onion both are acidic in nature, when you add their solutions, their extracts, to bases, if you make them react with base, their smell will disappear. They are acidic. When acids react with bases, you get something called salts neutralization reaction. We have also done this in, active, in, in chapter 1. But we will be doing it in detail here, neutralization reaction. Do not worry about that. But we know that when acids react with bases, salt and water is formed. So here, these two are acidic in nature. When you make them react with the base, their smell disappears. Both of them have strong scent. Onion also has a very, very strong odor. And vanilla also has a very, very strong smell. Vanilla, you all know vanilla, vanilla ice cream. You know the smell. Everyone knows the smell of vanilla. So both of them have strong smell. But since they both are acidic, when they react with base, their smell disappears. This is the observation you understand from activity 2.2.